The next topic we want to look at is Taylor polynomials. Now, um, depending on, on how your calculus course is sequenced, this might be something that you're looking at in the chapter on derivative applications immediately following differentials. Or it might be something that you're seeing in the context of sequences in series, and you've just looked at power series, and we're trying to make our way towards Taylor series. Um, so we'll try to do this so it fits both, and we'll probably take this perspective of we're moving on from the linear approximation, right, the tangent line approximation, and we're trying to improve that approximation, right? Um, and then whether you're thinking this is an application of derivatives or whether you're, you're thinking about why Taylor series makes sense, in, in either context, this will, uh, this will work out, all right? So we know that this linear approximation, right, it works well. It works well as long as we stay close to this point, right? So there's some point, you know, C here. And so if we go from C to C plus delta X, then, yeah, there's not much difference between the y values along the curve and the y values along the tangent, but only in some little interval here, right? Once we move out to, say, here, that gap's getting big. Out here, the gap's getting bigger. Once we're out here, the gap is huge, right? And it's a terrible approximation, right? It's only a good approximation on a fairly small interval, right? So if you're interested in improving your approximation, there are two choices that you have. One is to shrink the interval over which you're making that approximation, right? You say, well, look, uh, once delta x hits 0.5, the approximation is not good enough. Let's get down to 0.1. Let's get down to 0.01, right? But maybe you can't reach the values you need to reach by shrinking the interval. Maybe you need to approximate the function out here using values of the function over here, right? So that might not be an option. So if you can't shrink the interval, you look for better ways of approximating, right? So we know that if we have this L of x, right? So this is going to be f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c. And this is the linear. approximation, right? So the next thing you might ask is, can we do, can we do something like, I don't know, let's call it Q, Q for quadratic, right? Could we do something like Q of X equals, and I don't know, maybe the coefficients are going to look different, but maybe there's a, there's an A0 term, right? A1. Um, we'll work in powers of X minus C. You'll see that's going to be convenient, right? And, and maybe now we go to a second order term, right? And so we say, okay, is there, is there such a thing as a quadratic approximation? Can we do that? Does that even make sense? Um, right? So of course, adding on that second order term gives some curvature, right? We know the second derivative is where you start curving away from just being a line. So maybe, maybe this quadratic, right? Maybe it does something like this, All right? All right? So you get a better approximation for a larger range of x values. That's what we're hoping for, okay? Um, maybe you can go to cubic, right? Maybe you can go to, maybe like there's a c of x, right? So there's like a, like a, a b0 plus b1 plus b2, b3, times x minus c cubed, right? Maybe there's a cubic. And what's that going to look like, right? So, so you play around and you, you try to figure this out. Like, can we, can we make these approximations and, and how are they going to look? And, and maybe the cubic, right, maybe the cubic does something like, you know, Maybe the cubic does something like that, right? And you, you improve the approximation a little bit more. That's what we're trying to accomplish with Taylor polynomials. That's where we're heading, okay? Is we want to, we want to introduce polynomials of higher and higher degree so that we improve on the linear approximation, right? So we're going to keep adding, you know, we'll do 
linear, then quadratic, then cubic, and then maybe degree four, degree five, degree six. We'll keep going until we cover as much of the original graph as we need to and as closely as we need to, right? So the idea is as we add terms, we hope that two things happen. One is that over the original interv interval that we had, our approximation is better than what we had before, but also that we can widen the interval and have a reasonable approximation for a, a wider range of x values, okay? We want those two things to happen. Uh, so in the next video, we'll play around with this. We'll talk about, well, how do you decide what these coefficients should be? How do we kind of, you know, um, get things so that it's a good fit? And once we play around with that, we're going to arrive at the formula for the coefficients in what's called a Taylor polynomial. Then we'll be able to look at some examples.